Have you ever wondered why your surroundings may seem like a chaotic mess when your mind is in turmoil? In the intricate dance between our mind and our environment, clutter often takes the stage when we are dealing with emotional distress. It's not just about being disorganized or untidy, it's a reflection of inner turmoil, an external manifestation of the chaos within. When we're grappling with trauma or depression, our ability to manage our surroundings often takes a back seat. Our cluttered spaces are not the cause of our distress, but rather a symptom of it, a tangible sign of the intangible struggles we're facing. To appreciate this connection, let's delve a bit into the neurology of cluttering behavior. Our brains are wired for survival, and in response to trauma or depression, they focus on managing these immediate threats, often neglecting less urgent tasks like maintaining an organized environment. This behavior is rooted in our brain's limbic system, the emotional hub of our brain, which includes the hippocampus and amygdala. These areas are responsible for memory and emotion, and when they're under stress, they can influence our behavior including our ability to manage our surroundings. Furthermore, the prefrontal cortex, the area responsible for decision-making and problem-solving, can be affected by our mental health. When we're overwhelmed with emotional distress, this area can struggle, making it harder for us to decide what to keep and what to discard, contributing to the clutter in our lives. But here's the good news. As we start to heal our minds, we can also start to heal our spaces. Recognizing clutter as a symptom and not the cause of our distress is a crucial first step. It allows us to address the root of the problem rather than just its manifestations. As we navigate through the healing process, we'll learn that decluttering is not just about tidying up our physical spaces, but also about decluttering our minds, freeing up space for healing and growth. Understanding the link between our mental state and our environment is the first step to healing. So let's embark on this journey together, towards a clearer mind and a clutter-free life. Clutter isn't the disease, it's a symptom. A symptom of what, you may ask? Well, let's explore that a bit. You see, clutter can often be a physical manifestation of various underlying issues, be it trauma, depression, or even an overwhelming amount of stress. It's like your mind's way of saying, hey, I'm not okay right now, and that's okay. Recognizing this is the first step on our journey to a decluttered life. So what does this mean for us? It means that if we want to effectively address the clutter in our lives, we must first understand and address its root cause. We need to delve into our minds, confront our traumas, and face our depression. Only then can we truly begin to declutter. Before we can clean up the clutter, we must first address the root cause. The first step to decluttering your life starts within your mind. This is where the journey begins. It's not about tidying up a room or organizing a drawer. It's about setting clear, achievable goals and fostering a positive mindset. This is the foundation upon which all other steps to decluttering are built. Imagine your mind as a cluttered room. Thoughts, worries, and tasks are scattered everywhere. It's overwhelming, isn't it? But now, imagine sorting through that mess, setting aside what's important and discarding what's not. This mental exercise is the essence of decluttering. Remember, decluttering is not a race. It's a journey of self-discovery and growth. Set realistic goals, start small, celebrate your victories. Each step forward, no matter how small, is a victory. And above all, maintain a positive mindset. Believe in your ability to make a change. Embrace the journey, because decluttering is not just about creating a clean space, but also about fostering a clear mind. A clear mind leads to a clear space. The second step involves physically sorting through your clutter. This is a hands-on process that requires some courage. Start by categorizing your items into three groups. Those you'll keep, those you'll donate, and those destined for the trash bin. As you sort, ask yourself, does this item serve a purpose? If it doesn't, it's time to let it go. This process may seem daunting, but it's an essential part of decluttering. Remember, every item in your space should have a purpose. The next steps involve organizing, cleaning, and maintaining your decluttered space. Let's start with the third step, which is organizing. Organization is the heart of decluttering. It's about making sure that each item has its own place and that you know where that place is. It's about creating a system that makes sense to you 
that's easy to follow and that helps you keep track of your belongings. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as having a designated spot for your keys or as complex as a color-coded filing system for your documents. The key is that it works for you. The fourth step is cleaning. This is where you roll up your sleeves and get down to the nitty gritty. It's about removing the dust, the dirt, the grime that's been building up. It's about creating a clean, fresh environment that's conducive to productivity and peace of mind. It's about taking care of your space so your space can take care of you. The fifth step is developing habits to maintain your decluttered space. This is where the real work begins. It's about consistency, discipline, and persistence. It's about doing a little bit every day so you don't have to do a lot all at once. It's about making decluttering a part of your daily routine, like brushing your teeth or making your bed. The sixth step is repetition. Yes, you heard it right. We need to repeat the steps we've discussed so far. The process of decluttering is cyclical, not linear. You don't just do it once and forget about it. You do it again and again, each time refining your system, improving your habits, and deepening your understanding of what you truly need and value. The seventh and final step is acceptance. This is perhaps the hardest step of all. It's about accepting that decluttering is a journey, not a destination. It's about accepting that there will be setbacks, that progress may be slow, and that perfection is not the goal. It's about being kind to yourself, being patient with yourself, and celebrating the small victories along the way. Decluttering is not a one-time event, but a lifestyle change. It's about creating a space that supports you, that nurtures you, that reflects who you are and who you want to be. It's about freeing yourself from the burden of excess so you can focus on what truly matters. And most importantly, it's about healing, growing, and moving forward one step at a time. Why go through all this trouble of decluttering, you may ask? Well, the benefits are numerous and transformative. Decluttering isn't just about tidying up your physical space. It's about creating a conducive environment that encourages mental clarity and focus. Imagine a workspace free of distractions where your mind isn't constantly pulled in a million different directions by unnecessary items. That's the power of a decluttered space. But the benefits extend beyond focus. Decluttering can significantly reduce stress levels. Each item you let go of is like shedding a tiny weight off your shoulders. You'll find yourself breathing easier, feeling lighter, and experiencing a sense of calm you might not have known was possible. Furthermore, decluttering gives you a sense of accomplishment. Each cleared surface, each organized drawer, is a victory. These small wins build up, boosting your confidence and empowering you to take control in other areas of your life. Decluttering your space can lead to a decluttered mind. The journey to declutter your life might seem overwhelming, but remember, it's a process. We've walked through the seven steps of this journey together. Recognizing clutter as a symptom of trauma, starting small and setting achievable goals, maintaining resilience and a growth mindset, learning to let go, establishing routines, and finally, embracing the tranquility of a decluttered environment. The benefits of this journey are immense. Not only will you have a more organized living and working space, but you'll also enjoy a clearer, calmer mind. Overcoming clutter is not just about tidying up your physical space, it's about healing and growing from within. So why not start your decluttering journey today? Each small step you take is a step towards a clutter-free, peaceful mind. If you're interested in more content like this, consider subscribing to the Eternal Stoicism channel. Do you have a trauma you need to heal from? Start by decluttering your life. Remember, a clutter-free environment leads to a clutter-free mind.